it's uh, and here he's, it was. Yes, uh, here, here it goes. And we can see here he's uh, he made the uh, made the effort to come across, but looked to get into difficulty. Well, Haru this time couldn't respond, and that's the first time in this Giro d'Italia that no one has been able to respond to an attack on the hill. Even though there may not be a big change today on the descent, everybody could get back on. That's a very, very good sign for Alberto Contador, isn't it? Yes, it is a good sign that he goes in the attack. A surprise that he goes in the attack. In the conditions we have here, you know, to see him doing that, uh, I think uh, a lot of the riders, the general classification men there, were uh, very surprised to see Contador attacking here. Michael Matthews as well. Out on the left hand side catching up. Richie Port is there too. Rigoberto Uran is monitoring the attack, but Contador already showed that on the climb he's had the strength for the first time to drop his rivals and leave them a few hundred meters behind him there he is in the pink jersey it's michael matthews having a go to try and pull it on at the front in the meantime belated action from the peloton Well, I wasn't seeing things. It is, in fact, Lobato who is up there. Amador is there, too. Lobato and Michael Matthews there, as uh, Mick Rogers just wants to put a bit more calm into the situation. And Le Boire are not far behind, either. Contador has already attacked and already shown that Aru is just behind. 4.2 Ks to go, 1 minute and 33 to this group. They're not going to play out the stage win, but they're going to have to be really, really careful for gaps not to open up. Contador's made the difference. He'll be happy he's still got a man with him. Still time to go to the finish line. Sean, do you think Contador will be happy just having a bit of a moral victory there, or do you think he want to make or try and make some difference on this descent? Well, I think he was uh, putting in a tactic to see what the reaction. Maybe he see that Aru was a little bit of difficulty, and the riders, you know, can see very quickly. You know their pedaling style. You can see the gear they're using and. Uh, he must have seen something there from the other general classification men, so decided to put in an attack. But of course, you have to be feeling well yourself, and uh, you know it's. Uh, it looks like that Contador is, you know, getting better, and I think uh, he's difficult. Uh, Difficulty in, the, difficulty in the days after the crash, I think that's over. You know, to be able to attack here, the difficulty in the wet conditions, it's maybe the conditions that you would not expect Contador to go, and he, you know, performs real well in the warm conditions, but also can go well in those conditions. I well, was saying the other day that he liked the rain. He was disappointed on the first rainy day we had to have that shoulder problem because he said he would have probably liked to attack then, but we've seen it today. Third wheel right on the wheel of Fabio Aru. Sky and Richie Port could... Uh, Ten wheels further behind, Rigoberto Urano has already hit the deck just behind him as well. This is Ilno Zakarin, the man who is primed to take the win. It looks as though at the minute, unless he puts himself in trouble, that there is nobody that can catch him. This was the attack in the meantime from behind. Rutkiewicz was taken in. And CCC decided to send another man up the road. Being chased at the minute. And here goes BMC. Philippe Gilbert. Philippe Gilbert wanting to try and do something. Has he left it too late here, though? Well, they've definitely left it too late. And I have the question. You can see there with BMC, they have you know a number of riders still in this uh, group of big favourites. Why did they not you know join forces with Orika Greenedge? And then there was you know a possibility of closing down this gap. But you could see and you could read it that you know Orika Greenedge weren't going to close it down on their own. And you know going in the attack here course is going for a minor place but you know the stage victory is over this is Ilnud Zakarin who began his uh, world tour career at the tour of San Luis all the way at the start of the season that was three years after he failed to impress as a stagiaire at his brand new team Katusha last year he had a great year with Russ Velo though he won GC titles in Sochi in Adjigaya and Azerbaijan as well he finished 12th in Algarve second in Slovenia just outside the top 10 at the World Taburgos this year though he's taken the Tour de Romandie and here he is on the Giro d'Italia just outside a kilometre to go with a minute and 16 advantage over the pink jersey of Alberto Contador and let's say a minute and 10 over the two guys who aren't getting very far out of the peloton in their mission to chase him. That's the descending almost done. 
Zakarin hits the circuit of Imola. We're not going to have a sprint to the line, but we're going to have a Formula One fast finish on these wet, wet roads. For Zakarin, the only task here is to stay upright. And Sean, you'd have to say, enjoy the moment. Yes, well, he can afford to do that because the advantage he has, and you can see him looking about here, and he will be made aware by his team director that he has a you know, nice advantage over the rest of the breakaway, and why not enjoy it? 25 years old, Inut Zakarin. He went to a training camp in the south of Spain just before the Tour de Romandie. That was his object for the season. That was his target. He hit that target perfectly by standing on the top of the podium in Switzerland. Here he is, though, just two weeks afterwards at the Giro d'Italia and about to take a Grand Tour stage win for the first time. We didn't know what to expect from him when he came here. We now know what we can expect. A top-class performance on the Giro d'Italia. In Zakarin with a win on a crazy, wet and miserable for many stage 11. While well, they're chasing him in, that group with uh, Philippe Gilbert perhaps looking for some points. Ryder Heijsdahl again in the break. And once again, he's got the peloton hot on his heels. We've seen an attack from Alberto Condador as well. It's been another of those days that hasn't disappointed. It started with all the controversy about Richie Port and those two minutes dropped. Port at the front being pulled onto the line and you can see it's a late attack perhaps just to try and get a couple of seconds something back from him. It's going to be really, really hard to distance people here on the flat though, as you can see, Ryder Heijstar with those six riders who were all dropped by in Zakarin, all sprinting for points, all sprinting for time bonuses, and the prestige, of course. And look how fast Carlos Betancourt is, again proving, just ahead of Franco Pellizzotti, that he's fast enough to the line. Coming in behind, Philippe Gilbert is going to steal a little bit of a march on those behind. You can see Lobato is there as well, but it looks as though there are no splits in terms of Gemma classification another crazy day at the Giro d'Italia another win for the breakaway this time for Ilnud Zakarin of the Katusha team and Russia have their victory at this year's Giro d'Italia what a ride Sean what a ride um, you know it looked uh, it looked for me that the strongest ones uh, was going to be Betancourt and Inchasti but uh, Zakarin uh, Tremendous ride, you know, the, the, the way he rode away there and, you know, with the advantage he finished with, uh, carried on his, perform his performance and his form from the uh, Tour of Romandie and, you know, he is definitely uh, really on song at the moment. Really on song, but a good day for this man. People will be saying perhaps we're getting a little excited about Alberto Condador's dart there, but it means so much that he can drop a few riders behind. Psychologically, that'll be so important for him in terms of a win for Zakarin. That's going to mean so much to his career and to his team. And Katusha, they just can't stop winning at the minute. They've been the best team in the second half of this uh, first five months of the season. Yes, well, uh, you know, they have been uh, really... Uh, really strong in the beginning all through the season and they have some you know great victories but that one you know that was a really strong performance when you consider you know being out there in the breakaway the parkour the weather conditions to be able to ride away from the breakaway that takes you know a class rider that takes a class rider indeed Inud Zakarin finishing ahead of Betancourt, Perizotti and Charles Di Rosa, Kreiswijk, Heijdal, Paterski, Gilbert and Lovato and Contador holds on to the pink jersey. Big moment for the 25-year-old, and he's had a few already this season. Winner of the Tour de Romandy, winner on stage 11 here of the Giro d'Italia into Imola. Only the third ever finish in the history, 1968, 1992, and of course, now in 2015, after an average race speed of 39.069, another fast day. Those coming in, sprint for second place won by Carlos Betancourt on the right hand side. So another go for the breakaway. This is what happened behind. Gerens was there. Potetsky coming through, as you can see on the left. Contador, Uran, Port and Aru, after originally being distanced, all back together. What will this man be feeling after that little dig? Of course, it doesn't mean much on ter in terms of the time today, but in terms of what we 
saw and what we heard. Well, we'll come back to it in a minute. It seems as though we've got the stage winner. Along with a translator. Uh, Ilna, you'd missed out on the stage victory the day that Inchausti won, but you're obviously feeling a lot stronger on today's stage. I'm afraid my language skills don't extend to Russian. <laughs> I was rather hoping that the translator was going to help us out there, but he's decided to clear off to the podium as well. Zakarin, the man who made the move, this is where he made it, on that climb. Not the last time, but the penultimate time round, 20 kilometers or so to go, he went at the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari. It's Ilno Zakarin who takes the win for Team Katusha. So big one for Ilno Zakarin, another good day for Katusha. It means that they now have their win. And of course, it was on a day that they announced contract renewals. Marco Haller kept on for next year. The clock will keep ticking. Alberto Condor leads the Giro on stage 11 by three seconds ahead of Fabio Aru. Mikel Lander in third place with Cataldo 116. Kreuziger, Uran, Visconti, Caruso, Amador, and Koenig. No change there in the top 10. So Zaccarin, the winner on the day, plenty to dissect and talk about, and in a moment we'll be heading off to Giro Extra with Juan Antonio Fletcher and Ashley House. But Zaccarin looked happy at the podium. Betancourt and the rest of the guys have had a hard day out in the saddle. Another possible sprint day coming up. Of course, another difficult day as well. Malia Rosa will have to be very, very careful. Time to head down to Giro Extra, though. Juan Antonio Fletcher and Ashley House await us. association with the Israel Ministry of Tourism. No sprint finish in the end at all, not even for the likes of Michael Matthews in Imola and at the race circuit, we remember, for Ayrton Senna and Ferrari, Ilno Zakarin took the win for Katusha and Russia. Here in Imola, Ilno Zakarin from Team Katusha, the ex-Russian time trial champion and the current this season Tour of Normandy winner, of course, has won stage 11 of the Tour of Italy, the Giro d'Italia, the 98th edition of it. Uh, coming in in second, Carlos Betancourt of Azure Duzier La Mondiale and Franco Pellizzotti came in third as well. All of those men, Juan Antonio, in a break which went pretty early on. It was a big, great break full of strong, strong riders but Ilna Zakarin what a strong ride from him he went 20 kilometers from the finish line yeah he did that's a previous ride I mean it's even today he's a young rider and it was a sh sh kind of shorter stage but he was really good on going on the attack early so anticipating that breakaway honestly when he went on the attack I really saw well he's in a good position I think he's gonna win but before uh, even that the breakaway was with good and strong riders, I thought when I saw Orica riding in the front that they were not, what they were about to chase the group, chase that breakaway, and I was expecting more a small grid sprint. But instead of that, Ilul Sakarin, he went super good ride, and finally he made 
he brought home a victory for Katusha. Uh, it's been a superb season for Zakarin. Obviously, the Tour of Romandy win uh, just a few weeks ago. Before that, a uh, couple of years ago, Azerbaijan as well. What has he shown you this season, the improvements he's made? Well, he, he is showing a lot already. But the first, well, he, first time he impressed me was in Tour of Basque Country. He was helping Joaquin Rodriguez. He was helping Purito out to, to, to make the victory of, of the uh, overall classman of that race. But still, he was ninth on that GC, so that that tells you a lot. I mean, young guy, ninth on GC, and being a domestic for Rodriguez. And then after that, he won Romandy. I, I remember talking with Sergei Uchakov from Katusha, and and he was saying, "Well, we are already happy with him. We don't want to put much pressure. He's still a young guy. Probably he arrived to the Giro, maybe not at the perfect his perfect condition. So because we we were probably expecting him more." on GC a little bit better, but today he showed that even if not being 100%, he's still capable of, of, of winning a stage and in what way, actually, I mean, he won, I really love the way he won the stage today, I have to admit it. Uh, it's very difficult, of course, we see stage winners every day on the Grand Tours. Is it, how easy is it to project a future for somebody like Ilno Zakarin? What does he have that maybe could make him one of the great riders in the future? He can time turn very well, he can climb very well. He's just, I mean, we don't know more than that because that's what we've been seen so far. But I mean, as soon as he's got the, I mean, he's got the, the smell of the victor, the smell of going on the attack. So I think we are, he's a potential winner of, of big, big races. I'm afraid to say Grand Tours, but why not? He is already showing a lot. So he'd probably. He will come far, far in his career for sure. Okay, let's uh, see Ilno Zakarin get his uh, winner's adulation on the podium right now. Oh, what a good year for Ilno Zakarin. First time in Katusha colors this season. Signed after two excellent years at Rusvelo, and he's the winner of stage 11 of this 98th Giro d'Italia. He wondered whether he'd be here just to learn or to go for the overall. He certainly learned a heck of a lot today. Ilo Zakarin enjoying his moment. 53 seconds of victory margin over Carlos Betancourt and the rest of his breakaway companions. Always strong in the time trial. Weight loss this year has helped him to improve his climbing. He's climbing with the very best up in the Tour de Romandie. Second on the big mountain stage there to Thibaut Pinot. And he's going to get his Prosecco moment as well here. That's if he can get the thing open. Something he's going to have to get a bit more used to, I think. Ilno Zakarin. Winner of stage 11. Great day for Katusha and a great day for Ilno Zakarin and Russian cycling as well. Let's go back to the GC battle now. Uh, Alberto Contador, he looked pretty good all day today. No shoulder problems as far as we could see. And especially, he actually attacked a little bit uh, towards the very end on the last climb. Yeah, indeed. It's, it's been, I think it's already almost a week since he crashed. So it seems that his injury is starting to, to be way better. And again, he surprised everybody, especially Astana going on the attack there. But remember, Alberto, he's a rider that he attacks where no one is expecting him to attack. I mean, he also attacks on the, on the mountain, but also like in the middle of nowhere, when there's a climb, he just goes. And that's Alberto. That defines him a lot and pretty well, sorry. So that's what he did again. And, and it was very nice to see, of course, I mean, on the TV. Uh, the climb wasn't steep enough, though. It was never going to be steep enough for him to get away. So why did he do it? Was he trying to prove something? Was he trying to test his rivals? Why did he do it? I think first thing I think is that he really wanted to be safe on the downhill. So it was the last downhill of the day, and he really wanted to be the first or second guy coming into the, the downhill. But I also think that he just wanted to surprise. He just wanted to tell Astana, hey, guys, I'm here and I can attack you whenever I want, you know, whenever at any unexpected time I will go on the attack. So he's showing his car, which is something that he's fair. He's a champion. He's not afraid of showing his car. No. Well, he went on the attack and then, of course, after the finish, he went on the podium.
Yet another day in pink, and just as Miguel Indurain was in pink the last time we were here in 1992, it's his compatriot Alberto Contador who leads this one today. Visibly better by the day. He'll be hoping the local mayor doesn't tap him on the shoulder this time. Another day in pink. And another day in charge of the Giro d'Italia. At the minute, he's the man who will have the pleasure of going off last in the time trial at the weekend. And for the first time today, although he was just showing off a little, he was able to land a little bit of a psychological blow, dropping Aru and Ricci Port for the first time. Contador in pink then. And I'm hearing we might be able to go and listen to Ilno Zaccarin. This time with a translation. Ilno, fast Thank you. So, congratulations for your great victory. I mean, you've been showing a lot already this season, despite you are quite a young guy, a young rider. And we, I was talking to some of your team members, uh, Ucheko especially, he was saying, well, we are already happy with, with Zakarin. He's been already doing a lot. So we are happy, but you're still showing more than what your team is expecting from you. Он говорит, спрашивает, но уже на протяжении сезона ты показал очень многое, ты молодой гонщик, и в целом мы разговаривали с командой, и команда говорила о том, что действительно уже мы довольны теми результатами, которые ты показал в этом сезоне, но ты не останавливаешься на достигнутом, добиваешься большего, большего, большего. Что сказать? Я приехал на Джирда Италии попробовать себя в генерале, но пик формы после ряда гонок прошел. И мы с тренерами поговорили, решили то, что надо сконцентрироваться именно на этапах. Что я и сделал, сегодня у меня получилось. Это великий день для меня, и очень важный. Thank you very much, Ildur. We hope to see you more in the attack and a great year again. Надеемся, что увидим тебя в других атаках. Обязательно. Well, thank you very much indeed to Ildur Zakarin. Please, enjoy your, enjoy your rest. <laughs> And congratulations to him as well. Uh, of course, Ilna Zakarin this year isn't part of the... Romandia e oggi è andato a scrivere il proprio nome in una tappa importante del Giro d'Italia come quella che si è appena conclusa in questo scenario. Well, Alberto Codoro leads by three seconds, as you can see, in the Zaccarin leading. Leading on the day, Contador leading so far after 11 days. Landa in third, Cataldo fourth, great situation tactically for Astana. Fabio Aru will be hoping that it was just a moment of perhaps a lack of concentration that affected him at the end. Well, we've just uh, seen Alberto Contador still uh, in the Malia Rossa. Up until today, we've seen strength from Astana. What did you see from Tinkoff Saxo today? For me today, I think Tinkoff, they rode way better because they have the privilege on, on, the, on the pink jersey. So that allowed them to be more in the front. I remember as soon as we turned on the TV, as soon as we were having images, Tinkoff, they were already in the front and the bunch was splitting. And, and they were there in the front and the bunch was splitting behind and, and they were having that perfect position to keep Alberto Contador protected and out of trouble to avoid any crash and any, of course, bunch cut. Uh, in charge on the road for Tinkoff Saxo is Mick Rogers. With the Michael Rogers at the finish line, today it was like a hard dance, you know? It really was a very tough stage. Very uh, fast from the start with a lot of climbs. Um, we were quite lucky with the team. Well, we had the team was very strong today and able to control it. Um, it was in our interest to let the breakaway go out a little bit, and um, and then obviously the BMC with Gilbert came to close the gap and run able, and then uh, Greenhead tried again, but um, they were a strong group out there and. For us, it was it was an ideal situation, and we were quite happy for them to arrive at the finish. 
And we saw Alberto in the last six kilometers try again, try again to do uh, quite a few seconds difference. Yeah, I don't know what that was about, um, but you know Alberto, eh? when he when he feels good, he attacks, and uh, that's why he's so great to ride for. And uh, as I said, you know we're happy to keep the jersey. Um, it was a tougher day than I expected, and, and obviously the wet weather um, made it a little bit harder, but. Uh, once again, we're happy to keep it. Okay, thank you, Michael. We Fabio Aru holds on to his second classification in the overall. And he's also the best young rider. Top of the white jersey standings. And he's getting rather used to this as well. Another smile from the Sardinian. Two minutes and 58 over Davide Formolo. Formolo again coming home in the bunch today. Jan Paul Ants, third. Don't think he's going to be a threat at 20 minutes and 25 seconds, though. So uh, here we are once again. We've just seen Fabio Aru on the podium with the white jersey. Uh, a quick word on how Fabio rode today. Well, they rode again Astana and Fabio Aru. They rode again good in the front, but I was surprised because Fabio he did he answered on Alberto's attack, but he didn't show that capability of following him. So I was a little bit surprised, and I think. For me, one key point is when Alberto is going on the attack and Astana guys with Aru, they're looking at each other, well, well, what are we doing? So it was really a surprise for them. And we yet don't know if he really couldn't follow Alberto's will or just was uh, something that he decided while I let him go for a while. Yeah, it's interesting to watch Fabio. It's great, of course, to see uh, all the jersey winners who join us here on Giro Extra. And uh, right now, Juan Antonio can talk to you, the current Meñat, wearer of the blue jersey. Meñat, again in the breakaway. And it's a beautiful thing to, to wear that blue jersey. Yeah, when I saw the profile that I wanted to have a go. I think it's important to try and get points bit by bit for the blue jersey. It was a bit more complicated today to try and get the win though. And of course after Ilno Zakarin went out it was hard to catch him. Well done to him. It's nice to get the breakaway with the, the tranquility and the good feeling of already having won. Eh? Does it give you a, a lot of calmness? Yeah, I knew that I had that advantage really in the break today. Zakarin was there, I knew that he was there and it would be a very, very difficult day because he's so, so strong. It's a shame that we didn't try and break him down and get to him, but he got there and well done to him. Well, of course, you've got Andrea Amador in the top ten. He's a really, really good uh, time trialist as well. Do you think that it's an objective to get someone in the top ten? Yeah, Andrea's a really, really good guy against the clock. Oh, of course, we're going to see how we go day by day and have a look at Sunday stage as well and see what we can do. Maybe one of our guys can get in the break on Sunday and it's going to be a really, really good one to try and follow. Uh, let's uh, think about the King of the Mountains jersey. Benya has a really good chance maybe of keeping it for a while, this blue jersey. Yeah, it's looking so cool, so calm. He already won a stage and that's going to be his main goal so far. Yeah, indeed. Let's welcome uh, current red, uh, pink jersey wearer, uh, of course, Alberto Contador with Juan Antonio. Alberto. <laughs> you surprised us all with that attack. Well, there wasn't much terrain to have a go today. But I knew that there were a few riders who weren't enjoying themselves, they weren't feeling good. Ah, you didn't really see too much. But I could see again that there were a few riders who weren't great, so I had a go. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about, and you could see that on the television. Of course, Astana responded, but they were looking at each other and they took a while to do so. 
really good from you to have been so attentive at that time. Yeah, I think all and every day is important in the Giro. Of course, you've got to get over the bad days, and that's what I've tried to do. Today there wasn't any terrain, as I said, but there are interesting little things to see. Gracias, Alberto. Gracias. Uh, it's, I tell you, it's a real privilege to be here behind the scenes. I worked in football for a long time. <laughs> Footballers have uh, their initials sewn in to their football boots, you know, R7, R9, etc. Alberto Contador has his uh, initials on his trainers, but written in pen. It's fantastic, <laughs> absolutely great. Let's move on. Uh, let's move on to talk about Rigoberto Uran because uh, he had a crash, but he made it back to the group and didn't lose any time today. Yeah, I mean, we. With Rigoberta, I ju I'm just smiling with him because, like, all of the time one day we say, no, nah, he's not country anymore for GC, and all of the time he's back on GC, he's crashing, and he's making it back to the group. So what do we do with with, with Rigoberto? I think we, we should trust him, we should say, yeah, we, we should bring him back to the top favorites, maybe? Why not? Rigoberto is a great rider, and he, he will do great time trial on Saturday. Yeah, that is for sure. He's in sixth place currently on the general classifications. And one man who bears an enormous amount of responsibility for the riders is their soigneur. And we've just spoken, in fact, to Rigoberto Uran's soigneur, Thomas. We are with the master of Team Ethics Quick Step at the finish about the crash of Roberto Uran. How is How is? Yeah, I think for the moment it looks good. It looks not so bad. And we hope it's nothing is broken. Now is in the hand of the doctor, and the news will follow. But you saw him at the at the finish line. I saw him on the finish line. Yes, yes, it was okay. Okay, for me it was okay. Okay, because it was a very very complicated race. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but I think we everybody hope it's nothing is broken, and so I think it's it's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's so important, the Swanya, so important, the whole team. How do you see the GC right now? I know we've talked about Richie already, uh, but it is even interesting, even with everything that happened yesterday. Everything that happened yesterday, and everything that especially happened today. Yeah. We've seen, I think we've seen many things today. I really like Alberto's attack for two things. First thing is Richie's. Richie's reaction, did he react? No, he didn't. He yeah. just was, no, it's not up to me. I had, I'm three more than three minutes behind. It's not up to me to follow you. Which so is what you said, actually. Yeah. 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 So now it's even more pressure on Astana. It's even more pressure on Fabio Aru on replying to Alberto's attack. So it's hard to say if it's going to be more interesting than it was already before. <laughs> but we have a race here in the Giro, and it, the guys really want to race. Yeah, we definitely have a race. Don't forget the big time trial is on Saturday. It's a long one as well and quite hilly. Then it's up to Madonna di Campiglio on Sunday, but that's all still to come. Let's see what lies in store tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Stage 12 tomorrow, and a day from Imola to Vicenza. Monteberico, medium mountain it's for the first three quarters of the stage. The action... We've got an intermediate sprint at Galzignano Terme. Castelnuovo, fourth category climb. The Crozada, third category climb. And a fourth cap Corsa right Rosa on the line. This year, the parkour, uh, as you say in, in French, is a terribly interesting one. Week one was hard. Week two, a little bit more gentle. How do you see tomorrow? <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> it's so funny. I was reading on Gazzetta dello Sport. They were after the race. They were saying, "Well, this is going to be kind of easy traveling into the mountains." But <laughs> every, I mean, this is never in. Every day, there's something going on. Every day, is some interesting stage to watch and tomorrow on the paper we can say well it looks kind of in your words boring stage well <laughs> not my no, words no no cycling sorry for some people <laughs> but but yeah look at the profile it looks quite easy but it's finishing on a, on a kind of quite a climb not an easy final so that will change the strategy of teams a lot tomorrow so and I'm happy to see many breakaways making it to the finish. Fin I mean, a winner is uh, many times so far from the breakaway. So that provokes a lot of enthusiasm from the riders to go on the break. I say, well, all the breakaways are making it to the finish. Let's go on the break. So that makes the race even more exciting for, for the riders and for everybody. Yes, thank you, Juan Antonio. It is a fantastic Giro so far. <laughs> We're really enjoying it, and we hope you are too. Don't forget, the place to watch it is, of course, on Eurosport, the home of cycling, and get in touch with us as well using the hashtag Giro Extra and we'll be back tomorrow. See you. See ya.
Well, another day, another dose of excitement in the Zakarin winning. Remember to join us tomorrow. Many more stages still to come. Imola Vicenza, the next one, stage 12, 190 kilometers. And that is live Thursday tomorrow, quarter past two Central European time on Eurosport International. A quarter past one if you're watching on British Eurosport. From Sean Kelly, me and the rest of the team, thanks for joining us today. We leave you with the image of everybody crossing the line. A tired day. Condor still rules, though. Zacharin, the winner on the day. See you tomorrow.